penetration surge through the middle of that Michigan State first and goal. Right yeah. Yeah. Outstanding play. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are joined by Brian Mosalem, your co your co-host, along with my co-host, the honorable Jason Strayhorn. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing fantastic. A little pumped up today. Got a little yeah, extra yeah. juice. Got to get a little, I What's got up? I'm flexing. I'm ready. I'm ready for coach here. We got we got a legend joining us here. Mm -hmm. Of all time, the greatest of all. Right? They, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wearing pink. Coach, real men wear pink. <laughs> That's more Nick odd. Saban right there joining us today. <laughs> An absolute legend. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. It's summertime down here, man. You got to get into the light colors. I, you know, that, that's a sign of confidence right there. I like that, Coach. I Looking absolutely good. Like that. Looking good, Coach. You do. Coach, 296. <laughs> I'm down to 200. How do I look right now, Coach? I look pretty I good. like you did when you played, I can tell you that. <laughs> Not even close. I, I can't even confess that you're better looking either. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate you joining us, and uh, thank you so much for your time. You know, I mean, hope how's Miss Terry doing? How are uh, Kristen and Nick? Congratulations on Nick's wedding, and how's the family doing? Everybody's great. Miss Terry's great. You know, both. Uh, we have two grandchildren now, and they're doing great, so our kids are doing fine. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited about having a great family, and it's been, it's been good for us. And, you know, they're all still Michigan State fans. They watch every Michigan State game, every Michigan State basketball game. Uh, they love Coach Izzo. So that was kind of the heart and soul when they grew up, when they were just the right age, you know, when we were there to – you know, really, really become lifelong thing. So, what, what coach? Yeah. Tell us, uh, you know, just jumping and diving. I know we don't have much time, but uh, like, we want to know your what are your fondest memories of it? Besides coaching me, what are your fondest <laughs> memories uh, at, at MSU? Just curious. Yeah. Well, the first thing is we still have a lot of great, great you do. Um, you know, Kristen is actually married to Adam. Said us who lived in our neighborhood. She was five years old, and they rode the school buses together. You know, they've got you know one son. So, well, there's a lot of great relationships. We have a lot of great friends. Uh, we've got a lot of people that we stay in touch with. Uh, at Michigan State. I mean, we were there for ten years. So, other than being here for fifteen years, uh, that's as long as we were ever anything. So, um, you know, that's the number one. Thing. Second thing is probably all the, the players uh, who came to Michigan State made the program up for us and made the program a success. And that includes a lot of guys. I, I was proud to be there with George Burgos, when he was the head coach, and I was the defensive coordinator. And, um, you know, we had a lot of issues and problems starting out when I became the head coach, but um, I was really proud of uh, the job that all the staff did, that the university supported us. We had a lot of players come to the university and do a great job when you know, things weren't so great. They ended up that much you know, beat Ohio State in 98, and they ended up that last season on one of nine regular season games. But you know, beat Florida after I left, that was, a, that, that was a great number. But it's really the relationships, I think, that are you know, the thing that cherries the most. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's an important thing. People kind of get lost because – of the success that you've had, Coach, uh, about the stops that you've had, the loyalty that you have for all of those stops along the way when, you know, Brian and I talk about different championship games that, that you're involved in. You see people from Toledo. You see people from Cleveland. You see people from Michigan State. You're an incredibly loyal guy. And I know from a coaching standpoint, guys like Herb Haygood, a former player of yours that's a coach right now, that you do an incredible job uh, of like doing things that people don't even understand. They don't know that you're, you're spending time with him trying to help guys like that, former players and guys like us, succeed in life, Coach. Like, it, how do you fit all that? The, the, you you know, know, Coach, you took care of Cedric Irvin. You, yeah. you, had, you had Bobby Williams down there. You've had uh, Dean Altabelli's there. Like, you're, you don't do a good enough story. Uh, <laughs> not that you care, but you don't. 
There's not a good enough job talking about your loyalty and how much Michigan State has meant to you because you're a very loyal, taking care of all your former players. And I know you don't care to, but like you've always had an affinity for this place and you care very much about your former players. And sometimes I think that story doesn't get told, told enough. Yeah, that's um, what we were talking about. Yeah, we were just Thanks talking about that. Thanks for interrupting me, Brian, but that's Sorry, okay. I interrupt we'll them. Coach. We don't know where we'll we're doing. Go we'll ahead, just, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that uh, it's kind of a maybe a thing that a lot of people don't really understand. You know, if you didn't play um, on a team, you can play a team sport. Which a lot of people have, but there's quite a few that haven't. You don't understand the kind of relationship, trust, respect that you build you know, because when you play a team sport like football, you're not only got to be accountable to the job you have to do, you have to be accountable to the guy next to you that you're playing with uh, if you're going to have any kind of team success. And I think that kind of creates a special relationship. And when you're the coach and you see guys do that, I think that's something that's also really special that a lot of people don't understand. So these relationships don't end just when coach leaves or just when a player graduates. Um, you know, our goal is to help guys that have been involved in our program be more successful in life uh, because they were involved in the program. Well, that just doesn't stop their eligibility. You know? uh, that kind of goes on and on and on. And I think you know, all the, the, the coaches that I have the most respect for, I have the respect for them because of Coach Ryan or Coach Page or George or Biggie Money, even when I was at Ohio State. You know, Duff and Doherty. Um, it was the players and the lessons that they learned and the loyalty that they developed uh, by being a part of the program and the team that, you know, made them have a, a special place in their heart for their coach. And when people talk well about their former coach, I think that's a great indication that you were a good coach. Not necessarily a good coach, uh, but know, what, what kind of loyalty do the players have for you for what you did to help them be successful? That's, that's one of the most important things to me. Hey, Coach, I can remember going back to 1998 when I got a call from my father that my mother was, you know, in a, in a very bad place and, and I was able to go home. You got a ticket for me to go back to Indianapolis with her and I was very nervous about her being – you know, alive by the time I got there. You know, thank God I was able to spend some time with her and, and ultimately, you know, there were six weeks left for her in hospice before she ultimately passed away with cancer, from cancer. And, and I know how meticulous you are. I know how, what, how much of a binary business coaching is. It's, you know, wins and losses. But for you to be able to adapt, not only in, in something in a scenario like that, but as we've watched you progress away from Michigan State, you've been able to adjust and, and evolve. When I see so many coaches that have success, they get stuck in that success and they do not want to evolve because that's scary. How are you able to convert into something new that's unproven to most when you've had success in the past in a different, a completely different style? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, you have to understand that success is not a continuum. You know, just because you had some success doesn't mean you're going to continue to have success. It's really kind of moment there. Uh, it's in that moment. And that's it. Uh, and if you're going to continue to have, have success, you have to continue to learn, and grow, uh, but also have the ability to adapt. Uh, when things change, uh, you have to adapt and change quickly. And I think I got a lot of good mentors, but uh, I also learned along the way that you never, it's never, there's never enough, never enough knowledge, not enough experience, uh, not enough ability to handle, you know, every player's circumstance and situation, regardless of how big or small. Uh, so, and and I think that's the one thing that. I've learned how to do it through the years. You know, we change the way we play offense. We you know, change the way we play defense. We you know, change the way we uh, handle our, our, a lot of issues with our players through the years. Um, 
but I think those are all changes that were actually necessary and needed uh, because we have to be able to adapt. All these new rules that we have in college football now, like the transfer rules or whatever, I mean, if you can't adapt to these things, it's, it's going to be a tremendous disadvantage. You know, Coach, uh, we had Coach Izzo on a couple weeks ago and talked about your loyalty and, and, you know, touching about how just how much you helped us during the coaching searches when it came to D'Antonio and came to Tucker and how much your input. I think it's very important for Spartan Nation to understand that how much your opinion was valued. And talk just briefly about, you know, where D'Antonio took the program and, you know, Mel Tucker, who absolutely adores you, speaks the world of you, uh, reg highly regards you as one of his greatest mentors. You know, he's raised the bar at Michigan State. Mel Tucker talks not about winning Big Ten championships. It's about the barometer now is, com is, is Alabama, Georgia, and competing for, at that level. Um, you know, talk a little bit about Mark's transition over to Mel and Mel working for you. And, and can Mel reach that level where... We're going to be talking shit to you one day. We're, we're coming after you. <laughs> won't be the first time. Mark, oh. So, you know, I think Mark did a fantastic job um, in his time at Michigan State. He had um, success, he sustained success over a good number of years. He played in the playoffs, he played the bowl game. Um, had good players, well coached, a uh, you know, really good organization overall. Both these guys were as good of assistant coaches and contributed much to our success. But they worked for us, our program, as you say, or Alabama, or LSU, or wherever. Um, and I had no doubt that they would be very successful if they got an opportunity to be responsible you know, as a coordinator or head coach. Mark says he did a good job at Bell. I think he has all the right stuff. Good recruiter. He's a bright guy. Um, he's got lots of good experience with a lot of good people. And Bell's a listener and a learner. Um, and you know, the season they had last year was phenomenal. Great Michigan. Great win for them to beat Michigan. And you know, Michigan's in the playoffs. So, um, now, once you get to that level where you get to the playoffs, you're, 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 you know, you know, you know, you know, you have you know, the right combination of guys, whether it's the right quarterback, the right receivers, the right single guys, that's whatever it takes. For that thing to be successful, you don't have a chance. So I do think that some of the things that are you know, happening in college football now are going to change the dynamics a little bit and shift, you know, who has a better chance to be successful. And, People who take advantage of these things will have a better chance to be successful. I, I don't know how this state's going to, uh, but I have every confidence in hell about that. You know, that's that's a very good point you brought about, like NIL, and you've been very outspoken about that and how that's conducted. Where are we going from here when it comes to college football? It's like, uh, I don't really know. You know, I've said when we did all this stuff two years ago, it was just really what college football to be. So, um, Kind of see, you know that firsthand now. So, look, I think it's great. I think name it and you like this context that it was supposed to be. It's great. Players could use their name and it like this to make money. But I think everybody assumed that they would have their own representation, just like I told all, all of our players. Name. I mean, I earn as much money as you can. Uh, I'm great with that. When you start having collectives where people are collecting money to market organizations to play 23 players, that's not what it was supposed to be. And uh, now it's going to be who wants to raise the most money to have the best team to the best player. And in fact, it's not even good for the players because players should be focused on their development by underwriting college. They should want to develop their off the field uh, so they're prepared for when they can play football. Uh, they should develop a career on the field to see if they can play the next level someday. And that takes a lot of focus and a lot of work. And that value that you can bring while you're in college is, is much greater than what you can make when you're in college and in your life. So um, I don't know. I don't really know what's going to happen in the future. Mm. I don't think it's a sustainable model where we are right now. Agree. So, 
and abuse French control. So we'll see what happens. You know, Coach, when you when you talk about going back to when you talked about Michigan a minute ago, you know, if we can conjure up, you know, I know you're a very polished veteran coach now, and you can't. Why he be wasn't flapped. before? He, you know, I'm just telling you right now, he's not going to be. He's unflappable. Oh he yeah, is, he is absolutely. But when I say you got seven when, when, I, when I talk, when I say the words hatred, vitriol, you know, disdain, things like that. Which one of these two words pop in your mind first when I say Michigan or Auburn? I, 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 I don't have that. <laughs> I love it. I, I think what, what I don't personally have that. Mm-hmm. But I know a lot of the, the fans that we have, whether they're at Michigan State or whether they're Alabama, do have those words. So you gotta understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> this is coach, you're, you're, a, you're, you're a politician. A politician you're a politician, man. coach. I mean, come on. <laughs> we, we, need for you president. To, we need you to flip Nick the table over president. and say F this or F that. <laughs> That's what we're looking for, coach. We're in a locker room right now. We're not here, you know. The, right. Politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 no, you know, I, I really don't. I, I've never ever thought that competing against somebody um, was something that had to be personal. Mm-hmm. You know, it should be internal to you that you want to be a good player, that you want to be the best you can be. It shouldn't take somebody externally to bring out the best of you because they create an emotion that is going to motivate you to do something special. So I, I just never believed in that. I've never felt that. We were rivals with, I was at the Dolphins, with the Patriots. You know, that was a big rivalry. But Belichick's one of our best friends. We don't hate each other. We don't have disdain for each other. Um, it's no different than when you go compete with your friends when you play golf. You want to beat them, but you're still friends when the game's over. Um, so I, I think that's a healthier approach. But we're doing everything we can to win. Because um, you know we understand the passion that people have, and we have to want to be successful. We want to win, um, and you guys know as well as anybody. You both played. You know I hate to lose. So um, you yeah. come on, yeah. coach. Right. You hate to lose. I mean, speaking of that, I mean, does c- coach have you ever th- sat back and thought about like? the collective career that you've had you, so you're far. the greatest of I mean, all seriously. time coach like have you ever said wow i got seven rings i mean i got two of them and they're from a divorce but you got <laughs> you got seven rings and like have you ever thought about two divorces when people call you the greatest of all time have you ever reflected self-reflected and said and and i know you're you know you're you're in the process right you're caught up in the process but like have you en- enjoying the ride and like wow look what i have accomplished i mean has that ever dawned on you or it's just strictly about the process and we'll look back at it later but you know i it, it doesn't dawn on me i don't think about it um i spend most of my time thinking about the challenges of the future uh, what we got to do to win the day today what we got to do to win the day tomorrow uh, what we got to do to try to have the best thing we can have. Now, that's the challenge. That's, that's why you do it. That's the competitive nature of it. And, you know, people say, well, why do you keep doing it? Well, I love doing it. And uh, as long as I feel like I can do it and make a positive contribution, you know, I want to continue to do it. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people complain about the grind uh, that they have to go through to be successful, but it's the grind itself that keeps them going. And, um, uh, I love that part of it, and I love the challenge. But you're only as good as your last play. You guys have all heard that. No, oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. So what we have to do is not continue to be successful and you know, see what the response is from you know, fans and people uh, all over. But, uh, you know, guys, I appreciate having the opportunity to be with you. Um, I love both of you guys for the kind of players and the kind of competitors you were. Uh, but... You know, I got 
couple other of these. I, I know. Oh, you got to you got to recruit. We're gonna let Coach, you. We're gonna let you go. We got to show so you, you one. We're gonna show you one picture though, Coach. We're gonna show you one picture and we're gonna let you go. That's it. We're done. Show him the picture right there, Coach. I that had was, hair then. <laughs> <laughs> I just got one question for you. You're at, you're at a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I got one question for you. So if you ever lay awake at night and wonder why you went six and five at Michigan State, that that's that's probably why because your offensive guards look like that. But who has aged more gracefully, me or you? I would say you. <laughs> he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman because he's like, coach. We love a, you, coach. You're natural, coach. I want coach. We love you. Thank you for everything you have done for Michigan State. <laughs> we know you. how low you've been. We know how much you've helped on our coaching searches. We know how much we've leaned on you for advice, and uh, and we'll continue to lean on you, coach. We will, coach. We love you. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so for, much for all your help, and God bless you. And if you're not playing us, we're cheering for Bama. So <laughs> we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, coach. Nice Good. talking to you. Take care. You. Take care. Right. I'll see you. All right. Thank you, Bye-bye. Coach. You know, he's just. The consummate recruiter. I mean, t- tell guy, you, guy, he's, guy. Getting, he's, he's on the recruiting trail right he's now. Got 15 minutes. Yeah, that's he's it. Getting, he's rolling. Yeah, that was 21. We got a little bit. We, we got 21. We got 21. We squeezed we got 21 six out of them? No, yeah. Well, he did yeah, okay. You know, he, cu- he's he, on cut, a, he cut us off. He's on, he's on a, you know, schedule. The Little Debbies. We, we didn't have Little Debbies for him. He if we would have had Little him. Debbies in some coffee, he would have stayed longer. You would love those Little Debbies. He would have absolutely. Next time, we're going to get him on here. We're going to have some Little Debbies for him. He was. Airmail. That nice pink shirt on, though. Love that. <laughs> love, love the confidence, actually. When oh, you got man. seven rings, you can do that. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. That's the goat right Nick there. Nick Saban, greatest, greatest of, of all time. time, joining inside the locker room. Pleasure to have Coach. Got up and walked out of his chair before, before he cut away. That's his coach. That's how he rolls. You know? <laughs> you know, I wanna, yeah, How about you asking him who aged more gracefully? Than I'm him? just, I mean, I am who I am. I'm not going to change. I know. It is what it I is. Know. But, I, you know, I will say this, though. Uh, I want to give a big shout-out to uh, Big Mo. Big Mo Salami over at Clover Mortgage. Uh, I had a great personal experience refining uh, with my new purchase. I'm sorry. Their seamless process of streamlining their uh, mortgage approach has been absolutely phenomenal. Great communication. Uh, Mo, Mo Salami over at Clover Mortgage. Uh, for more information, DM us and we will get it to you. Don't forget about Cal Farah over at IHOP, the International House of Pancake. IHOP over in. Livonia, Middlebell Road. He's got another location in Ypsilanti and also Brighton. If you want your pancakes, Brighton, like I know you like the pancakes and all that glaze. On you love that glaze and the sausage and bacon, too. We know love that, too, that especially carbs. on Ramadan. Absolutely. It's a treat for all. Thank love you. Love that, Carbs. Thank you. And thank you, Coach Shabin, for joining us. On to our next topic, which is a little bit, you know, uh, a sadder topic. Um, Something that uh, was uh, very difficult on Spartan Nation over this past uh, few days, a couple days ago, Adrian Payne was shot and killed uh, on when a first round draft pick, one of Coach Izzo's uh, top big men here over the last couple decades. And uh, our, what do you call it? Uh, I don't, do you have that Twitter up at all? There it is right there. Coach Izzo issued a statement about uh, Adrian Payne, and uh, this one stings. This one stings. Young 31 man, years old, man. Young man breaking up a domestic dispute. In he, Orlando. In Orlando, as he always does. Uh, shot and killed, tragically, for being really a good Samaritan. And, uh, you know, you've seen the outpouring of support from, uh, from what do you call it, from... Uh, Many Spartans across the country, including Draymond Green, and yeah, uh, put it on his I shoes we, I during the a, playoff game. I think we have a video to play here. Do we have that video up, Fletch? She has That's him and Lacey. I do everything. 
to always continue to have a smile on my face, even when things are going wrong. I'm about to go. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. You have fun? Mm -hmm. All right, good. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right. Hi. Cool. This past year, she was back in the hospital, and I knew he was a little down about it, and things were looking kind of not very good. I said, okay, I'll go down there with you. We were on the way down there, and he wanted to get her something. He bought her this stuffed animal. When I came in, I was just so terrified, like, you know, what was going on? And the mother was whispering, AP's here to see you. And, and uh, as I sat there, just, just like a guy behind the scenes, and watched AP on the... You know, sitting on the bed with her, and the mother kept saying AP, and, and she turned, and her eyes opened for the first time in a couple days. And it was just like, her world was better. There's days where the smiles don't come as easily. When he can walk in the room, and you see her just light up like that, it means everything. When he picks her up and she's you know, way up above the world, she just feels you know, confident and, and protected and, and just comforted. Uh, how you mean? Did you like the game? I've had my moments when I've been mad at AP because <coughs> he didn't do something right. I've been happy with him, I've been proud of him, I've been disappointed in all the things that go on in coaching. But um, till the day I die, I'll, I'll never forget those couple of scenes that I was privileged to be part of thanks to him. See you here. Lacey will forever be a part of my life. She's fighting something. And you give her strength to get through it. Yeah. You can keep her living and keep her spirits high. Mm. Heartfelt words there. You know, um, he was very close to Lacey and You've seen an outpouring of support all across the Spartan Nation and, and many Spartans. It's just a very, very tragic, tragic story. And, you know, it's funny because, not funny, but, I mean, we, sports is so important to us. And uh, games are so important to us, everything that we do. And then something like this happens and it minimizes, really, a lot of the things of, of, uh, of life in general. I mean... Anytime there's a death, a disability, something like that, it just really puts things back into perspective. And uh, our hearts go out to Adrian Payne's family and Spartan Nation and MSU basketball. I know Coach Ezzo has been very upset about it. And many of the Spartans, uh, you know, uh, have mourned. And I know that they're, they're raising money to help the family. And uh, we're all one big family. I mean, we are all one big family. And it's a very tragic situation. And... Uh, May he rest in peace. Yeah, definitely may he rest in peace. Uh, a great athlete, but a better man. Adrian Payne passed away at the age of 31. You know, you know, Draymond had some very nice words about him, that he wasn't supposed to graduate high school. He wasn't supposed to graduate college. A lot of the things that uh, Dre said, uh, Day Day said, that uh, really hit home. And... Uh, when somebody passes away, we mourn for a few days and life goes on and it's, you know, you hope that his legacy lives on and that, uh, and that we will always remember. So uh, may you rest in peace, AP, and, you know, may, uh, may the good Lord call you home. God bless you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You know? Sad news. On to the next topic. The Walmarters are up in arms about our peach bowl ring. I'm just not sure why. I am not sure why. Why? I mean, we got to deal with this shit again. Are we serious? We do. Again. Yeah, we do. This is not. I mean, for the love of Christ, why does Braylon have to stick his nose into this right now? You know, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just don't get it. I, problem, I, I mean, Michigan I got two State. words for they that. They have such a hard on for Michigan. They're, it's such an inferiority complex that they have. 
You playing in the Peach Bowl and you put up the score of Michigan when you played and beat them in October 33 to 37, which really didn't mean anything anyway because Michigan still won the Big Ten and you're playing in the Peach Bowl. Why are you so worried about Michigan? You know what score would actually have been better on that ring is 40 to 29. You know what that score is? Oh, that's the Purdue score the following week. You beat Michigan like you do all the time, and what happens in the next game? You lose. Because Michigan is the only game that matters to you. You're so focused on the end state that you can't get to the national scene. There's one school in, in, uh, in the state of Michigan that focus on the national scene. They don't always get there. That's the University of Michigan, but that's their mindset. It's, it's national championship or bust. Then there's another school who all they care about is beating the school underneath, which is Michigan State. All they care about is beating Michigan. And that's all Michigan State fans care about, is beating Michigan. This is ludicrous. I won a, When I won my Big Ten championship ring my junior year, there was a score on that ring. It was the Ohio State score, which was 35 to 21. That's on the ring because we beat them to win the Big Ten championship. A moral victory? First of all, why are you wearing a Peach Bowl ring? That I ring mean, looks. I mean, here it goes again. Like, okay, so let me let's just explain. Well, this. let's go back to the Outback Bowl ring that they lost <laughs> in that game. Yeah, 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 yeah. They lost the Outback Bowl. Uh, but you know, Jason, how do you feel about those comments? So I, I want to be measured and reserved. <laughs> how do I feel? Yeah. Yeah. Look. Look. We'll, we'll, it's, Forget how I feel. It's what I think. I think that's that's a, a ludicrous statement by Braylon Edwards once again to say something like that. It wasn't a moral victory, I by the way. Say, it was a <laughs> real victory. It was a real victory. It was a real victory. And yes, you know when you put Ohio State on your ring, well, guess what? You know Michigan State puts Michigan because that is our rival. That, that's what we believe. We believe that we lay everything on the line for that. And, and just so you everybody's clear, the reason Michigan State had a tough time against Purdue is because they laid everything on the line and we lost some players, man. There were some injuries at Purdue. No one will, in the locker room, nobody in that coaching staff will ever say that. We will say that because it's the truth. It's a fact. We, had, we were short players against uh, Purdue and Ohio State. We're, 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 but this but, is but, but, but Michigan State laid it on the line against Michigan because Michigan came in highly touted. Let's not forget this. This was two undefeated teams facing each other in East Lansing. This is a all every media outlet in the world was there, and Michigan State was able to come out on top. K nine Kenneth Walker the third five touchdowns. The only individual to ever score five touchdowns on. Michigan ever not in the rivalry the only individual uh, that could score that many touchdowns against the Michigan what is it the leaders and best and all that the only individual that's ever done that so that's why it's on the ring Braylon that that's the only reason it's on the ring it's not because of moral what you so call moral victories it's because it meant a lot and people laid a lot on the line for that. And it does mean a great deal to us in East Lansing when we beat Michigan, when both teams are undefeated. These, this is not a moral victory. This was a flat-out victory and an ass-kicking in East Lansing against your alma mater. And it's okay. It's all right, yeah, man. It's all right. No big deal. I think, I think, uh, I think that uh, your school, Braylon, is 6-16 uh, six and 16 over the last uh, – 14 years against Ohio State and Michigan State for a reason. I don't think it's because your focus is the national scene. Yeah, that's that, not, that, that, that was... That, 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 that's not... That, that, that's, that's, we, uh, we, we, you know, can we call that malarkey? Is that, is, that, is that a good term for that? 30 years has clearly demonstrated the focus hasn't been the national scene. <laughs> I think that that game means more to the folks in East Lansing, to the folks in Columbus. And uh, that was not a moral victory. Ten of the last 14 games against uh, your alma mater were not moral victories. Sometimes I wonder if he's really delusional or is this an act or what. Are you, yeah, are you I don't, delusional? I don't know a, no, 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 it's not even about that. I think it's, um, you know, we're not, no, nothing personal here. It's, I'm uh, asking. I don't, it's, you know, his, uh, 
his opinion about it. But uh, it's the fan base. I'm asking it's a question. The, it's more of the fan base being delusional and that their their expectations. I think he's a great guy. I think the takes that he has are I delusional. Think some of the takes are on purpose, quite frankly. But uh, really, when Why? you're when you're six and sixteen against your rivals. And you're and you're telling uh, your rival, your hated rival, that the focus is a national scene, and and uh, us winning in the last ten of the fourteen games are moral victories. I think you're a little off base. Now I will give you this: you are not a Walmart. <laughs> you did go to school there. He, so he's not a Walmart, Brian. No. Third yeah. pick in a draft, right? Yeah, he was not a Walmart. You know, but uh, I just think it's. I got two words for that. Rent free. Mm. Rent free. Is that, you know, when history was written by the, uh, history is written by the winners, as we all know. <laughs> and when you see a score on a ring and you want to talk about it, it's just rent free. It's just that simple. So we'll keep doing what we're doing. You keep doing what you're doing. And uh, only time will tell what happens. But, uh, the scoreboard shows 10-4 the last 14 years, so anytime you would like us to talk about it and debate about it, let us know. I do want to have one, I, I do have one correction when I talked about the custard. The custard company is, uh, Custard Co. is, is uh, who, who we are, uh, who the experience that we had has been with Custard Co., not the other company, so... Custard Co. has done a great job in feeding us, and sometimes we get some of those intertwined. But uh, Custard Co., the company that's going to open up in Dearborn Heights, uh, is, is uh, some place that we highly recommend you try, and they've done a great job. And uh, I just can't believe how good their custard is. Wow. <laughs> wow. But back to Braylon. Anyway, so when we talk about you know the rivalry. The ri- listen. The banter is great. The rivalry is great. You want to talk about moral victories, and you want to talk about actual performance, and you want to talk about what has ha- transpired on the field. Like, let's have a real discussion about it, not for hot takes and you know attention with tweets. Let's talk about it, and I think we can have a very civil conversation. But hey, as always, we appreciate your input. So, uh, thank you very much. On to the next topic. Very interesting something that we saw. Athlons had Michigan State ranked as the sixth best co- uh, uh, job in the Big Ten. Coaching job. Coaching job. Do we agree with that, Jason? You're out of your mind. No way. Six. Yeah, I, was I mean, w- based on what? You know, if if you're looking at facilities and things like that, because that are yet to to come out of the ground, maybe. But no, no overall, that's just, that's that's not a a fair ranking, in my opinion. Michigan State is a uh, you know, you have every uh, everything at your fingertips at Michigan State. Put that number. Put that back up there. That graphic, real quick. Yeah, let's look at that one more time. You know, when I look at. And Nine. trust me, somebody that's been on the inside. When I look at resources, I look 95 at ninety-five million. That's all. Donor dedication. I look at the commitment from the coaches. I I know what's going on behind the scenes, as it relates to. Uh, I'm glad you do. Other announcements I, that are going to be announced, uh, <laughs> which we'll get into later. Me 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 me. We 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 we. <laughs> You know, I would rank us right there, one A and one B. Quite frankly, I mean, you got to be kidding me. All yeah, right, come right on there, one A and one B. And I'll put I win. Who's the highest paid coach in the Big Ten? We know who that is. Who? Yeah, Mel Tucker. Who's he coach for? We know. We know. He coaches at Michigan State University. Okay, so why is he number six? How, how, how can you say well, that? Not only that, who's got the number one uh, assistant coaching pool in the Big Ten? Mel Tucker. Any, any, anybody? It feels like Ferris Bueller's day off. Mel Tucker. Absolutely. Only behind Alabama and Georgia. I mean, come on now. You know, so I don't know if I agree with that ranking. I actually, I, Athlon I do know. needs to. Uh, Ath- we need to speak to the folks at Athlon, but uh, yeah, they got to get their stuff that, together. But that's the kind of stuff right there. When you're talking about building a brand, you're talking about building an organization, 
and, and developing a reputation for a job, right? When you see garbage like that put out there, that's the kind of stuff where other programs are looking at what they've, you know, resting on their laurels. We're not talking about 1975. We're not talking about 1981. When Bo Schembecker talked about the team, the team, the team. This is a different time, a different era, a different age. We're in 2022, and Athlons needs to catch up with the times because, like everybody else in college football, adapt or die. It's that simple. I love it. That's it is simple. adapt or die time. Shift over to MSU Let's basketball. Roll, Come on now. MSU basketball. MSU lands Carson Cooper. Coop. Carson Cooper, much needed big man, coming out of IMG Academy, 100% committed over the past week. And, uh, you know, word, word is that uh, he has got a tremendous potential and uh, athletic ability, can get it up and down the court. Um, some say he's, he's got the speed faster than uh, some, some, some of the uh, Julius Marble type. And uh, probably a red shirt type. And uh, does does that address our question for a big man? Do we need a big man? Do we need another wing? What do you think, Jason? I think we need more. I think we do. Uh, honestly, you know, from the research that I've uh, been privy to regarding this young man, I think he's a he's a great ad. There's no doubt about it. But I think the Michigan State with the brand that Michigan State does carry can do a lot better, can do more. There's more to be done at Michigan State uh, with the, in the portal era, the NIL era, and based on the brand that Michigan State has, especially being a blue blood in, in basketball, um, NCAA men's basketball to be exact, with Tom Izzo as a head coach. So, um, Though I'm not really ready to sign this guy off and say he's no good, I think he's a, he's a good addition. We need more. Are we going back into the portal, Jason? Absolutely. We are. We need to. Who are we going to get? Everybody. <laughs> we need them all, Brian. So, so in our estimation, you know, us experts who think we know what we're talking about, which we, you know, don't have any clue. Uh, we need a, we need a wing. We need a big. You think we need a big? Right. You said we don't have any clue. I think yeah, we need all of that. We do. So, I think it, it, we just, so, it, so the guy that hung eight banners, we're going to question him? Look, here we go again. Are we questioning him, Jason? Here we go. Abso- Listen, we need. We cannot lose. Did we lose, did, did we lose uh, somebody from Oakland to San Diego State? Yeah, but that's, but that's because of... Uh, uh, because of what? Because his, his dad was out there in an Air Force base because of the, there was a former assistant there from... Uh, University of Michigan, I believe, that uh, coached or coached with his dad or something. Ryan. I mean, it's... Ryan, you're making uh, excuses. I I've, I mean, I'm not... The guy's you know up, the guy we just interviewed? The guy's let me tell you, eight, let me tell you something. Let me tell you banners. something, Brian. You just talk, you, you, you're asking the question. The guy we just interviewed 15, 20 minutes ago would never lose to anybody when he wanted and targeted a person. We went after the kid. Who's the kid from Ohio State last year? Jameson? I think he's a Detroit Lion right now, right? He was a kid from Ohio State, came to Alabama, starred, got hurt, didn't win a national title, but first-round draft pick. Gets picked as the number 12 pick overall on a busted knee. We don't Listen, you must have talent in today's era to win. You have to. You, there's, there's no more of this cobbling together some guys that, that, that seem like they're, you know, for you or, you know, they're, 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 they're rah-rah Michigan State guys or they're Flint guys. Like, none of that's going to happen anymore. That, that time has passed. The ability to adapt is what Coach Saban embodies. And that is what it takes to win in today's sports era, Brian. Plain and simple. So anything less than that, yes, I have issue with, nope. and so should you. And I guarantee you, Smart Nation has issue with it. Don't call me Brian. That's your name. Here's what I have learned being around the university for so long. Um, 
those that are coaching, those that have hung eight banners, those that have multiple Big Ten championships. Seven national titles. No, a little more than seven national do. titles. I get it. I mean, he was doing the icky shuffle with recruits. S- seven national titles. I saw him doing the icky shuffle, or what's that? Was doing what are you? The, what are you telling me? Eight banners, seven national titles. Which one are you talking about, Brian? I'm, I said, set the guy that we just talked to. Listen, we had Coach on the other day. He said, adapt or die. That's he what knows. he said. Yes, he knows. I'm looking at the results. That's all I'm. At. Listen, I love Coach. I believe in Coach, but I'm looking at the results. You're asking about Co- Cooper, Carson Cooper. It's who you're asking me about. And IMG. You know I got a son at IMG, right? I know who Carson Cooper is. Do you know his reputation? I understand that. There's nothing against Carson Cooper. We love him. We want him to play well. But he is not the guy that you're saying is going to be the Messiah to come into East Lansing. Not, not, not based off of what we have seen to date, Brian. Do you think I was the best offensive guard Nick ever coached? Yeah, probably. Who's that? Uh, From Dearborn with a war number 63. Who's, who's, their who's first round was a tackle, Evan. Was it Evan Neal? Who was their, <laughs> their, uh, their first round tackle? Their yeah. guard. You know, the tackle was Evan Neal. And was, that, was I better than him? Where did he go to high school? Fortson? Dearborn? No, um, he went to IMG. Did he? <laughs> So we're good with Carson Cooper then. Uh, no, 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 no. So let's just, let me tell you something about IMG. Just so everybody is very clear, IMG has different tiers. They have, you know, national team, then they have varsity, then they have varsity B, and they have they, they have different levels, but they all are considered IMG. For the record, Brian, you would have played on the. When you were a senior, year, senior, if you were at IMG, your daddy's credit card would have got you on the eighth grade team. My daddy's credit. You're, now you're throwing a George. You Perlis. know, you know, daddy's credit card. George, that that is a George Perlis gem. George Perlis that told me g- that I am buying my friends with daddy's credit card. <laughs> God rest his soul. God rest his soul. It's still costing me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason's Tra- Jason Tra- IMG, Jason Tra- 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 your daddy's still credit my card. friend. I love you though. Still my friend. I love you. We're still paying, but he's still my friend. <laughs> love you know free. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness! I can't say, get any better. Than I'm this. gonna tell you what. Coach Izzo does best when he's doubted. Yeah, I know. Let's see what happens. I want, right. him, I want him. I want him punching. I want him swinging on me next you want time. Want to punch Coach Izzo? I want him swinging on me. I'm not gonna punch oh, him. Oh, you want him swinging on you? Yeah. yeah, Coach. I don't think you can recruit. I think the time has passed. Coach, put the camera on me. Coach, I'm challenging you. Ooh, Coach, hold where on you at, a Coach? Minute. Coach, I don't think you got it left in you. You ain't got nothing left in your tank, Coach. I'm leaving. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm smelling. Everybody's telling me. I'm like, this can't be. But I'm seeing the results, Coach. You look a little scared. Call us back. Talk to us. Let's make it happen. We're on your side. We want to make it happen for you. Don't be scared. Don't run and hide, man. Jason Strayhorn laying it down. I. Hey. I'm offended. Hey. SD4L. Right Barn there? dogs for life. See that right there? I'm offended. I'm Don't offend- be offended. You're with it. I'm offended. Now, granted, we do live in a what have you done for me lately society. <laughs> adapt or die. We had Coach on, and we, you know, he acknowledged adapt or die. Let's, I, think he's earned, I think he's earned the benefit of the, of the doubt. Would you agree? Listen. Every, yes, he has earned the benefit of the doubt. Do I think he's going to come from the depths? Is he going to be a phoenix rising out of the ashes? I think so. But, Coach, you in the ashes right now. Get your ass going. That's all we're saying. <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, I went through a tsunami of scandals in East Lansing. That was, that was your I, own undoing. I ain't talking to Izzo like that. <laughs> No shit. That ain't, that ain't, I'm sorry. Coach, I love you, Coach. I love you too, he's Coach. Out. You know what? I'm done. He's uh, out. He's out. Him? Him? He's provoking I'm a propaganda this. tool, Coach. He's yeah. calling you out. I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's shift over to these uh, new NCAA, uh, you know, teethless sanctions. Oh, enforcement. Teethless. 
of legislation on NIL. You calling them? You calling them gummies? They're, they're get this. I mean, the, the, the horse has left the barn. Come on now. So NCA recently has approved new guidelines cracking down on boosters. Basically, in a nutshell, talking about collectives, saying that those involved in collectives can no longer cannot be involved in the recruitment of a player, and they cannot have an association with potential recruits, at that incoming freshmen, or those at other schools. So you know, this is something that was said by uh, I don't know, whatever. Who said that? I don't think NCAA is able to go up to these schools in some manner based on what the collectives are doing. Uh, that could put a stop in, of some of the, some. So, so, so Mitt Winter does believe that if the NCAA, let's look, if the NCAA does put in rules, which I, I mean, I agree, right? I mean, if they got boosters going after and, and, and trying to induce recruits or going after recruits at other schools, and I think this right here is, is, is the teeth of the, the uh, enforcement. Any booster or booster-led collective that has been found to have associated with a perspective about recruiting on another college team or in high school will be found to have violated NCAA rules. And the booster schools is at a risk of sanctions, Colorado Athletic Director Rick George told SI last week. I got a question for you. If whoever's offering the quarterback at Tennessee eight million dollars to come <laughs> play there, how do they know who to offer if they're not talking to somebody on the staff? I mean, that, these, that, these that's numbers, when the Jeopardy music's supposed to play. These numbers in my at the University of Miami of who I mean, they're they're offering these kids these mo- this kind of money to transfer from Kansas State to play basketball. Where are they getting those directives from? I'm just curious. <laughs> if you and I want to go pay uh, my, my cousin's nephew $12 million to go play at Michigan State. Will they recruit him? Will they recruit him? <laughs> how, how do we know? Right. Why, why, why can't we just go just, just pay whoever? Pay, pay the guy underneath the bridge over there $10 million a year to go play at Michigan, and, and, and that means Harbaugh's got to recruit him and I sign mean, him. I mean, here's my point. Does that it doesn't enfor- work? That enforcement have any teeth? If they have the gall to go out and enforce it, and that means, look, look, when they start doing that, it's it's a it's Pandora's box. Okay, lawsuits galore. Oh my God! You stop a young man from getting money. And you stop. Uh, you start. So you start making people ineligible because of X, Y, Z. It's going to open up a floodgate of lawsuits. And so, you know, I think, I think the horse has left the barn. I think the NCAA is teethless. I think the NCAA is useless. You're done. Oh, it's over. There, there's a big statement. And the NCAA is useless. Man, what a big man he is. A sustainable model is going to be a salary cap. A salary cap for each team. What happens if if people challenge the NCAA? I mean, everybody already knows that the the Supreme Court has already. Anybody anybody can sue anybody. Yeah, but the Supreme Court has already said how they're going to rule in favor of the non NCAA. I mean that's the whole thing, Brian. I, I, I don't mean, know. I mean I, that's a very, the very good question. But I think the future, if they're going to put some type of quote unquote guardrails, it's going to have to be a salary cap that everybody abide, abides by, and a dollar amount per starter per. What player. happens if everybody breaks away from the NCAA though, Brian? Which is a very likely possibility, and yeah. I, and I believe that's the future. And there's going to be the, a commissioner. How about that? A commissioner the, the, over all the the power those sixty-five schools, four, two leagues, whatever these conferences, kind of like the AFL, NFL, the power AFC, sixty-five NFC. schools, the power sixty-five schools. I believe yeah. will break away from the NCAA eventually, and so how soon do you think that's going to happen? My sources tell me. Sources. Six, tell I'm me. just joking. I have no idea. I don't know, but I mean, it's headed that way, because there's going to have to be 
you know, some type of salary cap rules put in place, uh, or this thing is uh, the Wild West is, is here. I think and your timeline is tied directly to the question you just asked me is, when are they going to, is this enforceable? Are they, if they enforce it fast, then the move happens fast. If they lay back, it doesn't happen right away. If they enforce it fast, there's going to be lawsuits galore. That's just that's Which why I think I think the horse is left the barn. The I, think, I think the NCA is done. I think there's going to have to be a salary cap that 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 uh, that every school agrees to. And uh, but at the end of the day, you know, how do you limit a young man's potential on earning on his name, image, and likeness? I don't think there is a. I'm not sure there's a, a, a way to do this without creating litigation. You heard what the old ball coach said earlier. He said the players should have agents that represent them and go out and get the deals, not the collectives. That's what interesting. Nick Saban said. That is very interesting. Mm. It makes a lot of sense because you're seeing mm. a lot of these agents and these firms now hire these players, these prospects on uh, – marketing and brand strategy deals uh, with, I believe, the hopes of being their agent when they come time to declare for, for pro football so it, or basketball. So who knows where this thing's going. But yeah. right now, it's all over the place. But rest assured, when this is all said and done and announced, Michigan State will be at the big boy table. Rest assured. So you got anything else to add? Not at all. Open your jacket one more time. One more time. SD4L, baby. Spartan Dogs for life. Right there. You see that? Yep. That's coming. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Brian Mosalem, along with my co-host, the Honorable Jason Strayhorn. You are watching Inside the Locker Room. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Go Green. <laughs>